Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Watanuki, and thank you so much for coming to my K Fellowship Symposium today. I am very excited to share with all of you what I have done this summer um, for my research. And so, first to begin, I would like to thank Mr. K for providing me the, this opportunity to conduct this research during the summer. And so, as you can see, the title of my research is Developing a Convolutional Neural Network to Diagnose Cataracts for Early Treatment. So first of all, I would like to ask all of you to imagine the most beautiful scenery you have ever seen in your life. Was it a trip to the Grand Canyon? Or was it the sunset that you saw on the beach? It is needless to say that visual information plays a vital role in our memory and life as human beings. Now, imagine yourself waking up one day, unable to distinguish between a six or a nine on your alarm clock. How would you feel? Would you really be excited for another day? Or would you be exhausted? I think most of us would respond with a reaction to the latter. Well, in reality, over 40 million people on this planet wake up with a fuzzy and blurry world in front of them every day with no hope of improvement or change. So I decided to tackle the problem of cataracts due to the massive impact and destruction it was causing to us humans. Cataracts are the number one cause of visual impairment and blindness in the world. It is estimated that some 94 million people are affected by cataracts. And in the US alone, one in six Americans over the age of 40 possess some stage of cataracts. And furthermore, 80% of those who become blind from cataracts are from developing and low income countries. So what is a cataract? Well, a cataract is an eye disease that is caused by the buildup of protein in your eyes lenses. And this causes blurry vision as shown in the illustration. And for those with cataracts, seeing through a blurry lens is just like seeing through a foggy window. And when untreated, cataracts can cause blindness, which is very common in developing and rural areas. And this is mainly due to the lack of access to healthcare and lack of surgeons available to conduct high quality surgery. So tackling this problem of cataracts is vital because I believe that our health is the most basic and essential need that must be met for all other aspects of our lives to flourish. In fact, the third sustainable development goal by United Nations states is good health and well-being. And this demonstrates the importance of ensuring a healthy life and promoting well-being for everyone at all ages. And although cataracts are known to be fully curable, and it is never late to do so, early treatment is highly recommended for many reasons. The first, the first reason is that it's important because it can help you live a longer and healthier life. Research has shown that early, early cataract treatment improves the quality of your life, contributes to 40% decrease in mortality rate, and also fixes other issues such as nearsightedness, farsightedness, and even astigmatism. In addition, those with clear vision will be more aware of their surroundings, where spotting danger can help prevent accidents from happening. So the reason for diagnosing cataracts with artificial intelligence or AI is due to the high accuracy rates, cost effectiveness, and portability of the solution. AI can bring diagnosis accuracy rates to 90% or higher. And with more data, it can be improved further. Additionally, AI can spot very early signs of diseases. And finally, AI models can be made accessible to the public and available, allowing for increased access to healthcare, especially for those in developing and rural countries. Now, let me explain how I developed my AI model in my research. A CNN, or convolutional neural network, was used to create the model in my research. A convolutional neural network is a deep learning technique used to solve image classification problems, such as determining if an image contains a cat or a dog. So the use of a convolutional neural network in medical diagnosis and treatments have caused a revolution in the healthcare industry. In many fields of the healthcare industry, AI is becoming the second hand for doctors, providing a second opinion to aid doctors with the decision-making process. A convolutional neural network first accepts inputs of images, which in my case will be a fundus image of a patient. Then the model will randomly assign importance to various features of the image. 
And so, for example, in my case, the AI might assign importance to the blurriness of an image because cataracts cause blurriness. And in the end, the model will make a final decision based on extraction of essential features. And the diagram shown in the slides illustrates a convolutional neural network model trying to classify a handwritten digit of two. So to conduct this research project, I took CS231N, which is an open online course on convolutional neural networks for visual recognition by Stanford University. And to develop the convolutional neural network, Python was used as my programming language. And to code the model, PyCharm, which is an IDE or an integrated development environment was utilized. And for downloading and managing packages used in developing the AI model, Anaconda was used. And finally, TensorFlow was used as an open source library to construct my convolutional neural network. So to train the model, a total of 920 images were used. The entire data set consisted of 560 images of normal fundus and 360 images of cataract fundus images. And these images were collected from two data sets, namely the cataract data set and the ODIR 5K data set. Now, here are some example images used to train the convolutional neural network. As you can see on the left are normal fundus images, and on the right are cataract fundus images. And so distinguishing between a normal and cataract fundus image can be quite challenging, as you can see. And so this is the reason why AI can be beneficial and efficient if appropriately trained to differentiate between the two. Some methods I used to prevent my model from overfitting include data augmentation and adding a dropout layer. Overfitting is when a model learns the de detail and noise in the training data to the extent that it negatively impacts its performance on new data. Therefore, to prevent this from happening, I conducted data augmentation, which is a common technique used to increase the amount of data by adding slightly modified copies of already existing data. And for example, an image can be tilted by a certain number of degrees or flipped horizontally, as you can see in the image, as you can see in the illustration. And additionally, I also added a dropout layer to my model, which randomly sets input units to zero with a frequency of rate at each step during training time, which also helps prevent overfitting. And so suppose measures were not taken to avoid overfitting of a model. In that case, the model may reach an exceptionally high accuracy rate, but it will perform poorly in real world scenarios when unfamiliar and new fundus images of patients are inputted into the convolutional neural network. In my research, I utilized optimizers and learning weights to further optimize my model and increase my accuracy rate of diagnosing cataracts. As shown in the figure on the left, an optimizer's job is to find the local minimum of a differentiable function, which will minimize the loss function resulting in a high accuracy rate of the model. As shown in the figure on the right, a learning rate is a tuning parameter in an optimization algorithm that determines the step size at each iteration while moving toward a minimum of a loss function. So in my research, I tested five different optimizers, which were Atom, RMS Prop, Adagad, Ada Delta, and SGD. So as shown in the table, all other parameters were kept constant including the learning rate, epochs, and batch sizes. And just to briefly explain, epochs indicate the number of passes of the entire training data set the machine learning algorithm has completed. And when trained, the data sets are usually grouped into batches. So in my research, the Atom optimizer had the best validation accuracy rate of 87.5%, followed by RMS prop, Adagrad, Ada Delta, and SGD. Then I used the Atom optimizer to test five different learning rates and achieved validation accuracy of 93.41% on a learning rate of 1.00 times 10 to the negative six. So the results of my training show that the Atom optimizer with a learning rate of 1.00 times 10 to the negative six achieved the highest accuracy rate in diagnosing if a patient's fundus image was a cataract or not. This model will help in diagnosing cataracts at a high accuracy rate. And some further implications of my research include developing a website for public access to the AI model. Creating a website 
and making the AI model accessible via the internet will allow patients to upload images of their fundus to diagnose cataracts. Additionally, the accuracy of the model can also be improved further. Throughout this research, I realized that there are very few publicly available data sets of cataract fundus images to train my AI model, making it very challenging to achieve exceptionally high accuracy rates of above 97%. And so from this research, I learned more about cataracts, the severity of the problem in developing countries and the importance of early diagnosis. Moreover, this research has allowed me to understand how AI can help in early diagnosis, how to construct a convolutional neural network from zero to completion, which I had never imagined before starting this research project. And here are some core principles that I would like to share um, that I learned about conducting this research. And so first and foremost, please find a purpose to solve a real world social issue. So if you are able to find a clearly defined purpose with a real need for solution, it will definitely fuel your passion. And secondly, never hesitate to seek for help. I encountered many difficulties and errors while learning about loss functions, activations functions, and even coding the um, neural network. However, being resourceful and asking for help will almost always get you started in the right direction. And thirdly, enjoy the process. Nothing beats a person who willingly takes action to learn and take on new challenges. And finally, I'd like to thank Mr. K for funding my research, Dr. Chan and Tony Dang for mentoring and supporting me throughout my research, and Mr. Yanagihara for providing me with access to machines to train my AI model. Here are my references, and thank you very much. <laughs>